Uh, yeah, but we talk about this all the time. For example, when men go to lose their parents, lose their kid, and they go through a very dark time where all they want to do is cry. You know what happens with when your wife is next to you and you can just wake up one day and go to work? You know that is going to actually transfer into her soul. But if you have a really good friend, you are going to let all the sorrow on that friend instead of on your wife, right? And that's and that's why I think that that's where I think the advantage come come for those who have a significant other, a wife, spouse. Because whenever you have that, you don't have to open yourself up for vulnerability to have a friend in the world. You have somebody on your hip at all times. So everybody on the outside of you and your, your spouse or significant other can strictly be for some form of network. You don't necessarily need them for anything else. That's why I, I, I appreciate the journey I took and, uh, you know, to find my wife. So that's just my two cents. Your wife is not going to let you help you move. Like some friends are some friends. We have a lot of friends for different things. I think that the thing about your point actually is pretty good, but some people are just here because some people are our friends because they have not, nothing better to do. Are oh, you saying, uh, say my wife ain't gonna help me move? No, um, you know, absolutely not. There's some people in your life for a season, a He's reason, going, or for a lifetime. That's what you. it is. Seasons, yeah. reasons, and lifetimes. But so, they don't necessarily make them your friend because oh, they're in your life. For, for, she, secondly, second question is, you say my me? wife ain't going to help me move. Okay, <laughs> she, I'll just let that blow past me. But who's who's saying that I have to have a friend to help me move? Don't you talk about, like, you can be winning, but all of us have, have dark times, right? You are talking about, for example, yeah, I have enough money to pay for people to help me move. But in every circumstance, sometimes you need a male friend. You need a friend that actually is going to understand what you're going through and is going to see it and not, not going to judge you, not going to look at you as a weak person, not going to... You need a male friend, a, a man that will look at you as a man and look at somebody that is wounded. Right? But but I, I I wouldn't I don't like to associate the word need with it because it just seems like it's it's something that has to happen. I've moved like the, when I moved from Virginia to Atlanta, and no one helped me. I did it all by myself. Absolutely. So I, it wasn't a need. I mean, it would have been helpful to have it, but it's not a need. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I can't do, think do, of do no. Believe, that, that's totally fair. Do you believe that most men through their life? Don't need good friends, one or two good friends, to walk in by when they walk through the shadows. Don't you believe that? No. So you believe that a woman can do a, a woman like as your wife can do a job of a really good friend, like a really good friend, a really good. I believe. Friend. I believe a person you make your spouse, and I, my my wife. For every the person you make your wife, for every going to have your back more than anybody else in the world. Uh, yeah, but we talk about this all the time. For example, when men go to lose their parents, lose their kid, and they go through a very dark time where all they want to do is cry. You know what happens with when your wife is next to you and you can just wake up one day and go to work? You know that is going to actually transfer into her soul. But if you have a really good friend, you are going to let all the sorrow on that friend instead of on your wife, right? As a protector, shouldn't you actually make your wife life easier instead of unloading all the problems that you have on her? No, that's what my wife is there for. I married yeah. her. I married her and she married me. So we can be able to unload everything we have on each other. So that's totally fair. I want to say something right. really quick. So I'm like, sorry. I'm sorry, but when it comes to, like in my house, my husband is kind of the same. He has friends, but you talking about like good friends. I mean, sometimes it's hard to find a, a, a good friend, someone that you can trust. Because a good friend means that you're looking at them like your brother, right? There's not too many people you could find like that. So my husband, we moved and he moved by himself. He could have called somebody he knows, but he didn't because he keeps his circle small, right? He does things on his own. He does, for In my house, he doesn't, you know, if, if there's a space of vulnerability, Yes, it depends on what it is. He will release that. But if it's something that's going to stress me out, he wouldn't. He would figure it out on his own and, and be a man on his own somewhere else. But it has nothing to do with him having a friend. He figures it out how he wants to figure it out. I don't want to include people with it because now it's like you're relying on somebody else. Like I'm talking about as a man to help mm -hmm. you with your problems. I understand from watching my husband, he deals with his own problems, you know, as him being a man. And I'm not saying he doesn't have people that he calls. 
but he has his own way to figure things out. It's not like relying on somebody. Because when you start relying on somebody that's not your spouse, then it's going to become a problem when that person is not there. Because not everybody, you know, friends come and go like a season. So, And this also exposes what you actually marry for. You have some people who can't ever get to those extra layers whenever they have a spouse. They have these transactional connections, but they don't have these deeper connections where they can actually lean on each other for when, when the times are hard and stuff. So that makes a I difference think, between... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That was a mistake. I I, I thought I thought you were done. I swear. No, go ahead. You seemed like you was getting in there and I, and I, I should have let you go the first time. Go ahead. I can't tell if you're being sarcastic, but I'm going to go anyway. <laughs> so I understand that. Um, I understand what you're saying and I understand what Fatty's saying. But as somebody that has always been capable of doing things that normal normally people say, you can't do that on your own. I still know the benefit now of having somebody to help me that is a friend. And I'm not used to having that because I moved so much in my life that I just told myself, I don't need friends. I just have my siblings. We're very we're ridiculously close and um, we straight because we all close. So I don't need anyone extra. But once we started moving to different parts of the world, it was like, okay, do you know how to make friends outside of your family? Do you know how to be a friend outside of your family? Do you know how to be there for somebody else? And once I started learning those things, I became a better friend to other people and they became a better friend to me. So now I see how much better it is to have them than it was to have, to not have them. And I still have my family that's real close with me but I actually have help now and it feels completely different. So I understand that you can, you can do it by what yourself. What are they helping you with? It's easier if I have to um, put something up or if I have to um, take care of something at work and they, my kids can't come to me, come with me. They can go with my friend before it had to be my mom or my sister. Cause I don't trust anybody else with my kids or the daycare. Oh, so that's, like, that's different. I mean, cause I, 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 I mean, I put emphasis on having my spouse. I mean, mm -hmm. if you were to relate to that or challenge that, it would be you leaving your kids with the father. No. Also, th th it's not saying the father. That's what I'm saying. It's not saying the father isn't an option. But if he's busy, I'm busy. We have somebody that we trust. The kids love. The kids know. And that's very valuable. And, and, that, and all, that, that goes into how you your dynamics of your marriage. So I set it up to where. And I listen, everybody to each his own. Everybody run their household the way they, they want to run it. Me personally, I set my family up and my household up to where one of us will always be there for our kids. And never be a case where we need somebody else to come take care of our kids. I just I don't believe in that. And I don't trust anybody in the world with my kids like that. So it's it's upon the man and the woman to when before they go and have kids to figure out those dynamics, communicate early. How are you gonna how are you gonna deal with work? One of you going to stay at home or both of y'all going to work? Now you need other people on the outside coming you, into your circle. Wait so, a minute. Weren't you the same dude that was talking about stepdaddy and stepdaddies? Wait a, wait a god dog on minute here. Damn, oh. Bruce. Damn, boy, <laughs> you just defeated stands. your whole daggone argument, sir. Ow. Okay, so let's go into it. How? Sir, you just said, you literally just got done saying, you know, uh, for me and my wife, uh, I don't trust anybody with my kids. So you going to trust Sweeney with your kids? <laughs> Why would I have to trust him with my kids when I have to take care of my kids? What, sir? What, sir? Weren't you married before? I'm married now. Right, but weren't you married to a different? I didn't person have before? kids before with my first. Okay, wife. so that's why, sir, because there's nothing that's my, guaranteed. My, my you point get, still stands. Such thing as divorce, and, there's and my such point thing still stands. All of my kids were at that, were with or within my household right now. Today. But you, but you just defeated your argument because you How? was talking about Sweeney. That's why Sweeney laughing because you was just. Yeah, but, but I'm, like still, I'm still trying him, to figure out how to, how to be defeated. I'm, I'm trying to answer you. Your okay. whole premise that you just now said was total opposite of what Sweeney was talking about. That's how. How? Okay, so what was Sweeney talking about that was what I said was total opposite? If you don't trust your own children with even someone to watch them, that you're telling me that if something was to happen, that with you and your wife, God forbid, that you would allow a next man to be the stepdaddy? And be called daddy. Come on, so man, you're saying stop this. Playing. So you're now you're asking a different stop question. Playing. You're asking me whether if something extreme was to happen to one of us, then I would have be forced to trust somebody else with my kids. 
bro. I'm saying if, if I got the custom, the varsity is not saying extreme, I have, actually. The exactly. Is, and if you, and if you don't trust people. nobody that to watch extreme. your kids right it's now, not, then you're not going to trust the no next man with your kids. He's not like extreme. Divorce is an extreme, bro. Whether you look at it or not. He's not extreme. He's not extreme. He's a flip doesn't matter. It's still extreme. That's your house. He's not extreme in his relationship because he's not divorced. 